My name is Roxanne Clay and I am with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office and the director of the WV ABLE Savings Program, which stands for Achieving a Better Life Experience in West Virginia. So for those of you that are not familiar with WV ABLE, it is a savings and investment program that allows many individuals with disabilities to save and invest without jeopardizing their eligibility for federal benefit programs such as SSI, Supplemental Security Income, or Medicaid. Our program is still fairly new, and we are working hard to get the word out to eligible individuals so they know that the program exists and can learn more about the important benefits to owning a WV ABLE savings account. So with that said, during today's session, I will provide you a brief and very high level overview of the basics of the program that's related to eligibility, enrollment, how to make transactions, and other important considerations. And before we get started, I want to mention a tip to you. You're going to hear me say WV ABLE, ABLE, and STABLE. So essentially, they're all the same. WV ABLE is West Virginia's ABLE plan. ABLE is referring to the federal legislation, and STABLE refers to the name of the account that the West Virginia individual will enroll. Another quick tip I want to mention. On this slide, you see a screenshot of the WVABLE.com website. If you have an additional monitor or a smartphone, feel free to take a look at WVABLE.com. I'll be referring to the site throughout um, this overview. The website is where you can go to learn more about the information that I'm going to share with you today. There's also a list of frequently asked questions, and also it's where enrollment begins in a WVABLE account. I also want to mention WV ABLE has an advisory board. We meet three times per year and I regularly communicate with the members between the meetings. And as you can see on this slide, it is made up of numerous organizations and entities, including the West Virginia Division of Rehab Services that serve and or advocate for people with disabilities. Many of the organizations that are represented on the board are included on the slide. They each play an important role to inform individuals around the state about the program, as well as report updates in their areas of expertise. They host WV ABLE presentations, and then they also provide guidance and insight for promoting the program. So what is WV ABLE? It is West Virginia's ABLE plan and is based on federal legislation called the ABLE Act that was passed in 2014. It is included in the Internal Revenue Code as a new section, 529A. WV ABLE is a sister program to the 529 College Savings Program, which is also administered through the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. The ABLE Act created savings and investments accounts specifically designed for individuals with a disability. Money that is deposited into this account does not affect eligibility for public benefit programs such as SSI and Medicaid, also SNAP and HUD. The ABLE Act also gave states the mechanism to create their own ABLE programs. However, the ABLE Act does not mandate that states have a program, so we do feel fortunate to have a program in West Virginia. Now, our program launched in February of 2018, in which we just celebrated our fourth anniversary. WV ABLE is offered to the West Virginia resident through a partnership with the Ohio Stable Program. WV ABLE accounts provide financial independence for people with disabilities. The account is owned by the individual with a disability. The accounts provide new investment opportunities that they didn't have before. So individuals avoid having to spend down monies in order to stay below the $2,000 asset limit that is set by Social Security and Medicaid, individuals can now save for an emergency fund or for the long term. For example, a lot of parents worry what will happen to their child after they pass away. So WV ABLE accounts allow for the parents to start building a nest egg for their child, to pay for expenses that occur now, and to ensure that the child will be taken care of financially for the long term. WV ABLE accounts also provide tax benefits. Just like the 529 College Savings Plan, the interest that is earned on the investments grow tax-free, 
and the earnings remain tax free as long as the ABLE funds are spent on qualified disability expenses. And then new, as of 2019, there is a West Virginia state income tax deduction for all contributions made into the WVABLE account by the West Virginia resident and taxpayer, and that's dollar for dollar. So who is eligible? The requirements include that the individual is a West Virginia resident, and that the onset of the disability would have had to have occurred prior to the age of 26. However, keep in mind, this does not have to be the onset um, of the diagnosis. This could be, this could include the onset of the symptoms. Also, you do not have to open the account prior to the age of 26. And then one of the following criteria, the individual is eligible or entitled to receive SSI or SSDI due to their disability or blindness. This does not mean that you have to be receiving SSI. In other words, it simply means the individual has received a disability determination by Social Security Administration. Or the individual has a condition that's listed on Social Security Administration's list of compassionate allowances condition or through what's called self-certification. And what that means is that you have a written diagnosis by a physician of a physical or a mental impairment that causes marked and severe functional limitations, and the condition has lasted or is expected to last for at least one year. This is the same standard that Social Security uses for disability determinations. And then another quick tip, if you need additional help in determining or if you or someone you know is eligible for a WVABLE account, we have included on our website an eligibility quiz. It's a quick series of yes or no questions that will tell you if you're eligible to open an account. However, sometimes people do run into roadblocks with the quiz and then they think they're not eligible. So I always like to recommend for folks to click where they, it reads um, more information and that will take them to a full page that goes into more detail about their requirements. So let's talk about enrollment, how to enroll. Enrollment is done online at wvable.com. At the top of the home page of the website, you will see a tab that reads open account. When you click on that tab, it takes you to a separate page um, that will read stable account plan. Again, this is WVABLE's partner plan. It's relatively quick and easy to establish an account. You know, the slide reads approximately 20 minutes, but most often it's less than that. There is a $25 minimum deposit that's required to open the account. Now, this is not a fee. This just simply creates an opening balance. And as far as who completes the enrollment, the Federal ABLE Act requires that the person opening the account be either one, the individual with the disability who is the account owner or beneficiary, or if that individual is a child, or if it's an adult with a disability who is not able or willing to enroll in an, and manage their own account, then the act allows for what's called an authorized legal representative. And we often refer to that person as an ALR. And the ALR includes a parent, a guardian or conservator that's been approved by the courts, or an agent acting under a power of attorney. So this can be anyone that is willing to serve on behalf, serve in this capacity on behalf of the beneficiary. Now know that this power of attorney is limited to the WVABLE account, and we do have forms on our website. Be advised for the individual that acts as an authorized legal representative, they will be formally assigned to the individual's account and will be the only person that's allowed to transact on the account. And then new as of October 2021, the WVABLE Act was updated to include the following additional authorized representatives who may establish a WVABLE account on behalf of a beneficiary. And this is as per the IRS final regulations for ABLE accounts that were published in November of 2020, in which they expanded the list to also include a spouse, a sibling, a grandparent, or a Social Security representative payee. Additionally, I want to mention another important update. 
Social Security policy was also recently updated. As of July of 2021, that's when the information went public on their website. Um, their update is also in line with the IRS final regs in which their policy now allows for a Social Security representative payee the option of using an ABLE account to manage Social Security and SSI benefits. Also, Social Security now permits SSI benefits to be directly deposited into an ABLE account regardless if the individual has a representative payee or not. So these are all important recent updates that now allows for a large pocket of West Virginians with a disability to own a WV ABLE account. The picture that you see here was taken the day that our program launched in February of 2018. Denise Campbell is helping her son Logan to enroll in an account. Denise served in the House of Delegates from 2011 through 2016 and was the lead sponsor for the WV ABLE Act. Denise's son Logan was one of the first individuals in West Virginia to establish a WV ABLE account and Logan has autism, and last year he graduated from Elkins High School. So you might be wondering, how do you fund your account? So there are several ways. Within the stable online account platform, you can link a current checking or savings account, and you can make electronic funds transfers via EFT as needed. Second, you can mail a check directly to Stable Program Manager, now, a quick note, if you choose to mail a check payment, you will need to complete and include the form that's titled Check Contribution Form, and that form is available at the Resources tab of the WVABLE.com website. Also, you can do what's called Payroll Direct Deposit. This is where payroll monies can be automatically deducted and deposited into the stable account. This can be done by the account owner that is working, or a parent or other family member who wants to contribute a portion of their check on an ongoing basis. Know that there are payroll direct deposit forms at the resources tab on the WVABLE website to set this up. And then we also have what's called a gifting page. This is an excellent tool that makes gift contributions easy and convenient. So this compares to like a GoFundMe account. So the individual that's managing the stable account they're going to create a gifting page within the stable account platform. This creates a link that can be shared with family and friends via email, text, or on social media. The link allows family members and friends to make a direct contribution into that individual stable account. And since the monies are going directly into the stable account, there's no concern that the gift will affect the SSI or Medicaid eligibility. So let's talk a little bit about the investment options that are included with the stable account. And one piece to note, when a contribution is made into a, a stable account, the beneficiary or the ALR, they will need to determine how those monies will be allocated across the investment options that are included in the plan. Also note that the state treasurer's office, we cannot provide advice for selecting the investment options However, we do have detailed information about the investment options at our WVABLE.com website at the Savings and Investment page. And of course, you can also seek financial advice from a financial or investment advisor of your choosing. Now, as you can see on this slide, your investment options for a WVABLE stable account include, first, the bank safe option. So that is just like a savings account where the earnings are very low but it is a 100% FDIC insured option where the principal is protected. And then we have four Vanguard mutual fund options that range from aggressive to conservative. So at the savings and investment page under performance, you will see a link to a document where you can view past and current investment performance across all five options. And a reminder, the benefit of a 529A is that you do not pay taxes on the earnings portion of the investments and those earnings are tax-free and remain tax-free as long as the funds are spent on qualified disability expenses. Now you have money in your accounts, so how do you spend it? 
So money in an ABLE account are available for use at any time to pay for qualified disability expenses. And the legislation has defined what qualifies as a disability related expense in that it must relate to the disability and it must maintain or improve the health, independence, or quality of life for the individual with a disability. So note that the legislation is very broad in the interpretation of what qualifies. So there's not a list for the purpose that they didn't want it to be restrictive. So I always like to suggest to folks to think of it in terms of what would not qualify. For example, gifting the monies to a friend, gambling, tobacco, alcohol use. However, some examples of the categories for qualified disability expense would include expenses related to housing and rent, education, hiring a caregiver to help with transportation, food, basic living expenses, anything that benefits the child or the adult with a disability. Now note, when you spend from the account, you do want to make sure to keep documentation of what the monies were spent for. Because the IRS does regulate these accounts since they're allowing for tax-free earnings, you want to keep an audit trail in case the IRS or even Social Security Administration were to ever request or audit records. As for ways to make a withdrawal and to get money out of your account, there are no fees and there is no limit set on making withdrawals. If you linked a checking or savings account to make deposits, this is also how you can make a withdrawal by simply transferring the monies back to the linked checking or savings account. You can also make withdrawals with what's called a third party check in which you request stable program manager to issue a check to a third party or the account holder or the ALR. Also, you can spend monies from your account using a stable Visa debit card. I want to take a few minutes to talk more about the debit cards. They are a very convenient way for the individual that plans to use the monies in their WV able account more frequently, for example, to pay for daily living expenses. So know that the stable Visa debit cards, they function like a preloadable um, prepaid debit card. The stable card is available to everyone with a stable account. However, they don't come automatic. You do have to make a request to receive the card. Now, this picture we received a couple years ago from a parent named Carolyn Vigil. This is a picture of her teenage son, Jackson Brubaker, who has autism. The picture shows Jackson leaving the Dollar General store after making his very first purchase completely independent of his parents using his stable companion card. So it's just an awesome testimony that demonstrates how the cards teach independence and also confidence and self-esteem. I also want to mention some important other numbers and special considerations to keep in mind as it relates to WV ABLE and stable accounts. As mentioned before, there is a $25 minimum deposit to open an account. This is not a fee, rather this amount creates your opening balance. So how much does it cost to own a stable account? So the monthly maintenance fee is $3.25. That is charged by stable program manager. This amount is billed quarterly low, though at $9.75. So it's automatically withdrawn from the stable account balance. And this amount equates to $39 per year. There is an asset-based fee between 0.19 and 0.33%, and this applies only to the earnings portion of the investments. And this is very comparable to the 529 College Savings Plan asset-based fees. The maximum contribution amount into an ABLE account from any source is $16,000 per calendar year. So, and note this as well. For the beneficiary that is employed, he or she may contribute an additional 12,880 of their employment earnings. So this additional amount is made possible by the Federal Able to Work Act. So for the employed beneficiary that is contributing employment earnings, they may save up to a total of 28,880 per calendar year in their WB Able account. And then for the individual that receives SSI benefits, it's important they know that Social Security Administration 
considers ABLE account balances that are over $100,000 as a resource. So in other words, any amount over $100,000 starts counting towards that $2,000 asset limit for those receiving SSI benefits. Now with that said, this limit is only set for those receiving SSI. There is not a limit set for individuals receiving Medicaid, SNAP, or HUD benefits. So balances over 100,000 in their WVABLE account will not affect those benefits. And then new as of 2019, there is a West Virginia state income tax deduction for all contributions made to the WVABLE account by the West Virginia's um, state resident or taxpayer, and that's dollar for dollar. Again, this could be the parent that's contributing to their child's WVABLE account, or it could be the account beneficiary that is working and they are contributing their employment earnings to the account. Also, effective 2019, when the account beneficiary passes, West Virginia Medicaid will not file a claim against the WVABLE account for any medical expenses that were paid on behalf of the beneficiary. So this was standard internal policy, but now it is state law. West Virginia was one of the first states in the country to pass this legislation in which there cannot be a Medicaid clawback. The only exception is if the expenses were paid for the individual living in a nursing home or a community-based waiver program and is over the age of 55. And this is as per the West Virginia State Recovery Program. So more information about that program is located at their website at wvrecovery.com. So what about support for maintaining a stable account? So please note the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office, we do not have access to the stable accounts, so we would not be able to answer account related questions. However, you may contact stable program manager directly. They're located in Rhode Island and they have a dedicated staff to provide customer service support. Their toll-free number is 1-800-439-1653. Also included on this slide is my contact information for WVABLE at the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. Please reach out to me with any of your program-related questions to request program materials, to also request a WVABLE webinar or a present in-person presentation. You can call WVABLE directly at 304-340-5050 or email WVABLE at WVSTO.com. I also want to mention a couple other valuable resources available to help you learn more and to stay connected to WVABLE. Our website, as mentioned before, WVABLE.com is where you can go to take a deeper dive into the information that I shared with you today. There's a list of frequently asked questions. There's a uh, resources page. And again, this is where enrollment begins. Also, WVABLE has a Facebook page. So if you don't already follow us, find us on Facebook. This is an excellent way to stay connected with the program. We post testimonials, articles, tips, and myths about WVABLE to help individuals learn more about the benefits and how to maximize on the use of their account. So that wraps up the very basics of the WVABLE program. And with that said, I know we covered a lot of information. So for anyone that would like to learn more, I'd like to invite you to attend one of our recurring WVABLE webinars. They are a PowerPoint presentation that lasts about an hour. We cover program information in more detail, and we also take a deeper dive into the special considerations and benefits that are important for individuals and families to know and understand. So you can find the dates for upcoming webinar events by starting out at the WVABLE.com website. At the top of the page, you will see click here to view the list of upcoming webinars. That takes you to the next page. That is the WVABLE page that's located at the State Treasurer's website. You see the dates in the lower right-hand column. We include two dates per month to choose from, and you can simply email WVABLE to reserve your spot. So thank you again for attending this WVABLE session. It's been great to have you with us today.